Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, so you've got um, Chair Farak, uh, Tom Ellsbury, and Pascal Arsenti are all here. Absent is Ron uh, Marinoff and Greg Stilson. Then myself, Chief White, and uh, Director Kilkenny are present. So if you want to go ahead and call it to order here at 7.14 p.m., Steve, we can get moving through. Okay, let's welcome everybody and let's call this meeting to order. And uh, let's, uh, let me get back to my page here. There we go. Okay, do we have any public tonight? You do. Oh, we do. Okay, well, I shall read the order. Uh, this will be a virtual meeting of the Marinwood Sea. SD Fire Commission pursuant to executive order N2920 issued by the governor of the state of California. There will not be a public location or for participating in this meeting. Any interested members of the public can participate with telephones or via internet by util utilizing the web link or dial in information printed on this agenda. Um, uh, uh, do they have the, I'm sure they must know how to get into the meeting. Uh, instructions on how to make a public comment during the meeting. Points in the meeting when the meeting chair requests public comment, members of the public participating in the live meeting, either via internet or telephone, shall indicate their desire to speak. If participating via internet, please click the raise hand feature located within the Zoom application screen. If connected via telephone, please dial star nine. Okay. So I'd like to uh, make a motion to adopt the agenda. Can I get a- I'll make the motion. Thank you. Can I get a second? I'll second it. Okay. Then the agenda should, is adopted. Um, okay, let's go to item number two. Public comment on non-agenda items. So we ask, uh, make your comments to three minutes. Is there any public comment on non-agenda no items? items? Yeah, one second. Go ahead, Steve. Hello, All can, right. Right? can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. First of all, I wanna congratulate the uh, beautiful people on the fire commission. I can see Eric and, and Chief uh, White and Steve and the lovely Kathleen Kilkenny, but I can't see the other uh, commissioners here. And um, I do have, actually I had a comment for the agenda. I think um, we need to uh, discuss what was discussed at the last meeting. Um, I had written in um, some concerns, had an a exchange with Chief White concerning um, uh, the description of the work that's being done out in the, um, uh, for this fire clearance. Uh, I expressed my support for it, but um, there's quite a bit that we don't know, and I just think that um, I think it's a mistake to move ahead with this project unless we know precisely what's going to happen. Um, I also want to, uh, with regards to the agenda and the minutes, which I don't actually, well, I guess it's coming up, but um, they're more detailed, which I appreciate. However, my comments, I was neither identified uh, in my comments and nor were, and they were not complete but I'll wait for comments on that as we, they come up. Um, the concern is we've had a rough description that we're clearing out all the debris up to the six foot mark, but it raises additional questions. You know, how much material is gonna be pulled out? It's said that it's gonna be done by hand, no machinery up there and I I don't really see that, that as a practical thing and if you look probably even out your window if you look look uh, to any wooded area you'll see that uh, the area from zero to six feet uh, uh, there's quite a bit of material there and my question is how much of that is going to be removed because it's a lot of material 
for example, there's a, a, a bush may grow up to, say, 12 feet. You can't trim it up six feet. So you're either removing that bush or you're, um, or you're leaving it there. If you're leaving it there, you're leaving um, flammable material. So I guess we've, the description given to us by uh, the fire, uh, uh, wildfire uh, commission, I th think was very incomplete. It certainly wouldn't be adequate for a uh, contract, I don't believe. Um, and I think that needs, you need to pin down with greater detail exactly what's going to be removed. I suggested that, um, you know, standards like, okay, everything up to say, you know, all trees or all material uh, that has a diameter of maybe up to five inches will be removed. Um, basically, you're removing a lot of material, and if that's all being done by hand, it's an absolutely enormous task. I thought that uh, you'd be using brush clearing devices because they're, they work a lot quicker, and maybe, in fact, even though it's, it's pretty, mm, uh, well, violent <laughs> sounding because basically you're grinding up everything uh, up to six feet tall, uh, I, I think you're going to have to use that. And to use that, you know, if, if that's the, the level of clearance that you're doing, you're, you're making a big impact. But, but the description we're given is, is that, no, we're just going to use loppers and stuff like that, and we're going to pull it all out by hand. I mean, that's just not realistic. You, can, you, you need to look, walk through the woods and, and ask yourself, okay, how is this going to, uh, happen. Um, I don't think it's going to happen with people with, with you know, uh, uh, a chainsaw and loppers, and, and that's going to be done. I mean, you're, you're really talking about something very different than what has uh, been alluded to. Um, so I, I ask, actually, in tonight's meeting, and I, since it wasn't put on there, Eric did not identify me as the source of, of uh, some of these concerns, nor did he include any of my um, conversations and Chief White's response. You're not, apparently, you're not going to discuss it tonight, but um, I think it's a huge mistake. So there's, uh, what I'm asking is for transparency. You're, you're a public agency. We don't have uh, really a public view into what's going on on this fire commission. I don't know why the other commissioners are uh, shy about being identified, um, but uh, I think it's imperative because you do represent the public. Your views are representing us uh, in the community, and so we need to know who you are, what you're saying. We just need transparency and we're not getting that so that is the substance of, of my remarks transparency and then accuracy in reporting on what act okay so is that your question right now is Okay, we can have some discussions. So if you give us a chance, we'll uh, try to answer some of your questions. Uh, I think the issue with the uh, people not being on is, is one is one's on a telephone. And oh, there, there, there's, I, I think it's the way that Eric has this set up. Every Zoom meeting I've been on, the people on the phone are identified in a little square uh, usually they have a picture up um, and they, they talk if they, they don't want to be on live video. Um, but at the very least, their phone numbers should be identified. So when uh, the comments are being made, we can identify who's speaking and what they're saying. Uh, um, I, I don't I, I think that, well, I have the numbers here and I also have the name so 
um, and they can identify themselves when they speak. And usually uh, they do identify themselves uh, when the meetings that we've had, they've always identified themselves when they speak. So I, I don't think that would be too, too much, much of an issue. issue. The only other issue would be... Uh, well, it's the way that Eric's got this, this Zoom call set up that he's that people are being invisible. So I that that I actually have spoken to Eric about this and maybe he doesn't know how to do it. He could get some advice from other public agencies, I'm sure. But, you know, whenever I've had a Zoom call, you can tell who's on the call, except for this this uh, uh, agency. So I, you know, it's uh, you know, you all say well, good things. I'm not really questioning your 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 commitment. Right. Well, of course, as soon as COVID lifts, and I think they were talking about June 15th, I think things may quite possibly change. So we might be back to the uh, other way we were. We actually have a, a public meeting. So I think in the meantime, instead of trying to solve all this problem, which June 15 is right on the corner, I think the care issue as, as time goes on, and I'm sure uh, Eric will do his best to make sure that uh, the people are identified if that's what you're concerned about. The other issue that you talked about was what's going on with the um, transparency. As far as I know, in all the meetings that I've had, we've been pretty transparent. We haven't had a lot of public involved in our meetings. And uh, we have pretty good discussions about some of this, and some of the questions we get from some of the commissions or, or, or commissioners are very good. And um, we've only recently, in the last meeting, been uh, given all this information about what's going on. I I heard you in the meeting last time talk about the uh, bio issues and also about how it's going to be performed and stuff. I know the chief answered some of those questions, and also uh, I think it was uh, uh, Quinn Gardner and Kate Anderson also had some answers regarding that also. Um, I mean, we can get into more detail if it's necessary. <clears throat> I, I'm sure that we have to balance. Then it was made to sound like, and I, I mean, I assume that you are. I, I, I did a little bit of research on my own and I saw what um, a fire break is supposed to look like and that's, you know, it's pretty dramatic and um, it's a lot of material that you're pulling out. I mean, I, you can't even walk through some of these areas because there's so much debris built up and I believe that if you want to do a fi proper fire break, which incidentally I do support the, the project. Um, mm -hmm. I think you you need to you need to be specific and not not you need to be you need to approach the problem of uh, the public's uh, you know disclosing to the public. Okay, I think in the last meeting they identified the areas that were going to be taken uh, that were looked at, and there was some discussion about whether it was private. Or, or you know whether it was an area that could be taken care of. Uh, they also talked about some of the methods that they would use. Um, I was over in Corte Madera, and I believe the same program's going on. And uh, one of my fellow bike riders was telling me that they cleared all this area out, and he said it looks so much cleaner. He says. Of, of course, there's you know you don't got as much privacy, but he said I I rather have the fire protection because it's going to probably be a pretty bad fire year. So uh, he was pretty happy with it. And um, I thought I would mention that tonight in the meeting that I did see what they did in, in Corte Madera and Larkspur. And it, it looked good. They did a lot of nice stuff because we go through that area quite a bit when we ride our bikes. So it, it did look good. Um, uh, hey, Steve, for act, if I can, this right now yeah. we're working on public comment for non-agenda items. Um, the minutes of that okay. meeting are on the agenda. Okay. It can certainly be more appropriately. It, it can be more appropriately discussed. Or, the uh, concerns, because actually, if this comes up, I'm I will go public with my concerns. And I, I don't want to do that. I, I'd rather 
I'd rather the, the commission handle this properly, and that's the reason why I get on these, these calls is not that I want to be a nudge. I really want uh, us to do the right thing by the community and our uh, beautiful open space. I, I support the project. I, I just don't think that we're getting the full story of what is going to happen. There's, if you're going to take out everything up to six feet, you're taking out a lot of material. And um, that, that's probably a good thing. But if people don't know what is what you're actually going to do before you do it, I think I think there's going to be some blowback, and it's going to be on all the the this commission here as well as. Okay, Stephen, Stephen, Stephen. Before I was interrupted here, back to my point, Steve Farrak. Yes. This is the time for public comment on non-agenda items. The minutes are an agenda item that will be discussed later. Okay, so it can be talked okay, about so, during that time. Okay, so let's move it down to where we're in the draft minutes. Um, is there any non agenda items specifically? Non agenda? No. Okay, let's, let's move on to the Number item number three, commissioner's items of interest. There was no commissioner items of interest. So um, we're going to uh, just go past that and we'll go to item number four, which is the draft minutes of February 2nd, 2021. Um, can I get a, uh, let's see, can I get a motion to approve that? This is Tom and I will make a motion to approve. Can I get a second? Hey, Pascal, I'll second it. Okay, the motion for item number four, draft minutes is approved. Okay, now we'll go to number five, which is the draft minutes of March 16, 2021, the Joint Fire PNR Commission Special Meeting. Um, do we have any public comment on that? You should go to commissioner comments on it first, Steve. All right, commissioners, do you have any uh, Specific comments on this, Pascal, Tom? Tom, I have none. Okay, thank you. Pascal? Hey, Pascal? No comments. Okay, now we can open up to the public and we'll take the uh, comments that were made by S Steve Nessler and we'll um, go ahead and try to answer some of those things for you. And I understand it's going to be a big project. Um, the main, and I understand you support it, and I understand that um, there's probably going to be different types of terrain and plants and all that sort of stuff. Again, I believe they went over some of those things when the uh, biologist talked about it. Um, I don't have his name in front of me right now, but. He, uh, he spoke to some of those uh, issues, and I think the, the chief and also the, um, the two fire um, personnel mentioned things about it also. So um, regarding that issue, was that, uh, was that transparent to you then at that point, Steve? And that's a question to you, Steve Nestle. I'll, I'll bring him over in a second. Uh... Steve, uh, just a couple comments on the minutes. They yeah. are uh, much more uh, descriptive than would normally go into an action set of minutes, which are the approved style of minutes uh, that we do for our commissions and board. I did that given the nature of the meeting and the conversation that was discussed. It was a presentation. It was encouraged for Q&A by all involved. If you look at the very top of the minutes, there's a link to the uh, meeting that's on our YouTube channel on the district. Um, I certainly spent quite a lot of time re-watching the meeting as I was putting these minutes together. That said, they are certainly not intended to be a word for word transcript of what was you know, an hour uh, plus long meeting. Um, but uh, I, I stand by them. It is up to the commission to approve them as they are written or ask for amendments. Um, 
and they will also go to the Park and Rec Commission at their meeting as well. Now, uh, if you would like to bring a public comment back in on this, I'm happy to do so, unless Chief White has anything else he would like to add. Uh, actually, yes. Um, you know, I would like to state that, you know, we, we did our best to answer the questions and concerns that were brought forward at that meeting and even um, beyond that meeting with some of the emails that ensued. And so, you know, I, I've got the utmost confidence in the staff that we've hired, their experience, their perspective. Uh, the things that they're recommending, best practices, the ecologically sound practices, as well as the methods that they're proposing to use for the vegetation removal in such a manner that's going to be deemed um, sensitive, but yet appropriate and thorough enough that we're going to protect the community without really just taking a, a indifferent approach to how we actually go about completing these projects. And so I'm not sure of the public's expertise in this area, but I think the, the staff did an excellent job of conveying uh, the methods and their, their relevancy and how those things will be applied on these projects, the projects we have in San Rafael and elsewhere. And so as to the comments about Larkspur and, and what's happened in other uh, jurisdictions, you know, I would ask if we have, haven't had any reasons to be very overly suspicious or heightened concerns based on past practice, I'm very confident that we're going to continue to be able to deliver on a, a, a very positive outcome. And we've been very transparent and inclusive up to this point. And so I just want to ensure that um, that information is understood. I want to make sure people understand I have confidence in our staff and our approach. And so you know, I don't know if that's appropriate for me to say publicly to everyone or just to the commission right now, but based on the comment I'm listening to, um, it almost seems like they're second guessing what we consider to be our in-house employed subject matter experts. And if, if there's not some, some confidence in that, I need to understand why. Okay, Kathleen, did you have a comment? I saw your Kathleen I director. Um, I just wanna let, I wanna, I can't reiterate what Chief White says, but we do believe in the presentation that we heard and thank you very much for both from everyone taking the time to present all that information. Can you guys remind me when it's going to start? Um, I'm, I don't have the exact date offhand. I know we're looking to train some of our um, defensible space inspectors. We're looking at trying to get projects lined up and vendors okay. lined up to be able to do those things. It could be sometime in May or June is my best guesstimate right now. Okay. Um, some of the other projects that ha have or involve core allocation funding may move into as, as late as July when the new fiscal year starts. And so our, our approach is to try to get things done sooner and later. We're onboarding defensible space inspection staff here in the next several days. Okay. Um, I brought in retired fire chief Chris Gray. He's going to provide training to those staff. Um, he's working as a professional temp assisting the department on that and other things. Um, okay. So I think we, we've really got a, a good chance of launching things sooner than later. But when it comes to some of those projects, as you understand, there's going to be an RFP, there's going to be a process to select the appropriate vendors and, and individuals and companies that can come out and do the work in the manner that we actually put forward. So I'm, I'm guessing easily several weeks before we start getting movement on some of those projects. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, is there public comment on that? Yeah, one second. Okay. This is Tom. Is anybody there? Yeah, Tom. You were here, Tom. Yes. Yes, we can see. Um, with regards to you know my background, I went to the University of Massachusetts and studied in the School of Forestry for a while. I've also built trails. I've worked for uh, the Appalachian Mountain Club. I'm a lifelong environmentalist, naturalist. So I'm, that's kind of my background. It's certainly not an expert, expert I wouldn't call myself an expert, but uh, uh, I do have some knowledge about the ecology of forest. Um, you know, but really what this 
concern is I, I uh, sent some questions over immediately after our last meeting asking for specificity. I received no response for about a week and then I did a follow-up email. Uh, to this email I asked uh, some more pointed questions just asking for specificity um, uh, and I copied in uh, our supervisor Damon Connolly because I know he's also an environmentalist and actually if things go wrong here he's going to be hearing from the public and so you know there is uh, some reason to to have some concerns there from uh, the supervisor level. Um, it is frustrating uh, that I don't, you guys do not have uh, emails uh, and apparently uh, Eric didn't uh, copy you in on what I think is important information from Chief White and my uh, questions and it would, I would think that they would be completely appropriate uh, for the commission to discuss. Um, so, yeah, it's a huge frustration. I feel like uh, uh, the board, uh, while you, you all are, have good motivations for our community, if you're not involving the, the public, you're not really, you're not acting as a public agency. And um, I, I would hope that uh, uh, there would be a greater commitment to transparency. Like, once again, um, you know, I'm looking at four faces right now on my computer. I guess there's seven of us or eight of us on the meeting, um, or seven of us in the meeting, and I think all of us should be properly identified. Um, it's a problem. I mean, it is a real problem. It's a problem uh, throughout the Marinwood CSD, and I don't know uh, if you're doing good work, you're proud of the work that you do, why you don't want the public to know what is actually going on. Um, uh, with regards to Chief White's response, I, it was great. Um, I, I appreciated it. Uh, I didn't think it was sufficient and it does require uh, further uh, discussion, um, but uh, since you don't have record of those questions, none of you do, um, you know, what are you doing here? You know, it's this is a public meeting, and 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 you're representing the public. So um, if we don't know the exactly what's being done, how can we assess the environmental impacts? I think it's kind of like you're saying, oh well, we're going to do everything the right way, which I certainly hope that that's the case, but. We don't know because we don't know specifically what is actually being done, what, what kinds of uh, concerns um, uh, for, uh, for erosion, for example, uh, erosion issues that may result in as a, all this clearance. There's a lot going on here. We're, we're basically changing um, the viewscape as well as the environment that people have lived with for, since the founding of this this uh, this district uh, 60 70 years ago so gosh I mean I'm, I'm I hope that this is a helpful comment and not regarded as as something that uh, uh, is just an annoyance so you can get on uh, with the rest of the meeting um, I have I have nothing else to say if if uh, if uh, if you're not getting the information I, I do put that squarely uh, uh, on our manager who is really trying to control the flow of information um, uh, to the community and, and to you commissioners. But you guys are going to be the ones that are going to uh, uh, bear whatever uh Well, okay, so we're as far as we're concerned anybody can join us publicly if they want uh we haven't had a whole lot of public in the meetings uh we would love to have them if they want to show up and i congratulate you for you know being part of the public i appreciate that i'm sure the other commissioners and commissioners also do too um the 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 youtube meeting um there was a lot of information in that 
and I'm just asking you specifically a question. Did you not get anything, your answers from that particular meeting? I mean, did you? Yes, did I, you? I'm saying exactly that, Steve. And, and okay. I appreciate you asking me that question. I, uh, and I followed up with Chief White, and he did answer, you know, he answered it. I, I, I'm not really even questioning, you know, his response. I just right. don't think it is of sufficient detail uh, to move ahead with the project and not knowing how some of these mitigations are going to happen. I mean, you know, when you remove when you remove vegetation, you have erosion issues that come up. So I, I guess it, you know, you, of course you have wildlife issues, but I, I personally I, I think that you know, if we push back the boundaries, you know, 50, 100 feet, it's not going to affect the whole, the whole of open space, but it is going to impact, you know, people's, people's sense of privacy, uh, uh, their land. I, I don't border a, an open space, so I, it's not going to affect me personally, but it certainly is going to affect, well, maybe hundreds of Yeah, sure. I understand. I, I know we're under. Well, I know we're under a time limit regarding the fire season. There's already been fires in Siskiyou County, uh, and I know we're we're short on water, especially this year. And I'm I'm, I'm worried about that. And I, I've we've addressed a lot of issues in this um, commission about you know do we have ways of detecting fire? Do we? And you know we've talked about different uh, other issues, uh, specifically regarding this program. I think it is a good program because I think it's 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 getting all of that debris out of there. I was talking about a fire earlier where the debris was so thick that you couldn't put the fire out. So. Um, if we do, if we do get a fire in this area, it's going to be horrendous. And I think anything that we can do with the time limit that we know that we have is good. And, you know, a lot of this stuff grows back because I've back of my house, I've gone back there quite a few times and cleaned things up and it always comes back. The leaves drop, the, you know, needles drop, the uh, trees grow more branches, the grass comes back up. So, um, I think it's far more important in the balance of things that we do take care of this issue. And I'm, I'm definitely trying to push it as a fire commissioner to, to get this taken care of because I think it's a good thing. And um, I, I don't think that we're going so deep into the forest and, you know, like putting in an oil pipeline or putting in roads or whatever that we're going to disturb nature that much. And uh, there was some discussion on it. And I think, that this discussion was was good. I think it was very transparent. Nobody was trying to hold anything back. So um, I would appreciate your your backing this project. And I understand that some people will be upset that their trees might have been cut up to six feet or something like that. Well, that's probably going to happen because nobody's happy all the time. Everybody gets upset about something, you know, no matter what. So uh, I think we'll just have to deal with it as it comes up. Well, I, I, I and I. I fully appreciate what you're saying, and I actually don't disagree with much of what you're saying, that uh, oh. we can do this and it's a good thing. Um, but I don't know if you are aware that we had a big erosion issue. Uh, uh, part of the fire road collapsed on an elderly, uh, in the backyard of an elderly resident, and uh, cost the district a couple hundred uh, thousand dollars to... Uh, and a legal, lots of legal fees uh, to uh, finalize, and uh, that may be an issue. We may be dealing with landslides in people's backyards if we don't properly uh, address this mitigation during this project. Um, you know, so you know, I I didn't I thought it was 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 very vague and. Uh, promising a lot, um, uh, but I, I do support it in principle that, that we clean out this area, but, but we have to make sure that it's done safe because while we, we want to be concerned about wildfire, you know, having a landslide in your backyard 
uh, and maybe lots of landslides in people's backyards, you know, we're going to have an issue, and and uh, and we want to make sure that we do this correctly. And I I didn't hear anything in the meeting about uh, erosion control and uh, uh, some of the other environmental issues. Uh, John Campo brought up some points and some concerns. Um, apparently, you guys can fast track. Uh, uh, fast track these the, these types of projects through environmental review but I think um, it's not that that I want to stop the project I want to make sure that we do we cross all our T's and dot all our I's and do this the right way that we're not just inviting a whole nother set of pro, uh, problems for um, the people of this this district right uh, and I think erosion issues more have to do with actual taking out trees, which I don't think is is being specifically done. I think they're just being trimmed. And I also think that the uh, leaves are being picked up that are possible, as they call lat ladders for fuel. So um, um, like in the back of my backyard, I did have an erosion issue and that was there with the leaves that were there. So I had to put uh, uh, some concrete in that area just to, to just keep the hill. And that's fine, it's been fine for several years, so I haven't had any problem at all. Um, uh, I think that if there's gonna be erosion issues, they're probably already there. So basically- uh, Anytime just, you take out, any time you take out anything, uh, whether it's grasses or, or you know, small trees, you're gonna, you're gonna have, uh, less water absorption on, um, you know, in the forest, and there will be erosion issues that are, are brought up uh, or that appear. So, uh, you know, what can be done? I I hope that the uh, the wildfire authority we that particular issue with erosion uh, control um, is really addressed prior to. Um, you know the wide, you know, remove wide removal of material because because we we are going to have problems unfortunately. Anyhow, I, I I don't really have an answer here for you. I don't want to stop the project. Well, um, I guess we'll have to rely on our uh, experts and just keep an eye on them. All right, uh, so let's go to the draft minutes of March 16th, and I'm asking for a motion to approve. This is Pascal, I'll submit the motion. Okay, can I get a second? I think Tom's... Uh, Tom, you're muted again. You need to push star six. I'm not sure why I got muted. Tom, if you can hear me, you need to dial star six on your phone, please. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Can I get a second? This is a, this is a third time I've been dumped. Yeah, you should be good now, Tom. I hope so. <laughs> Tom, I made the motion. Okay, that's a second. So we'll approve the draft minutes of March 16th, 2021. Okay, let's move on to item number six, which is the Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary. So, Chief, uh, it's in your hands. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, good evening, commissioners and uh, members of the public. I uh, just want to give you uh, this month's report for um, a variety of things regarding COVID, the MWPA, and a couple of emergency incidents we've had and vaccination status. And so I don't, I don't want to go word by word, read through the entire document, but I'll give you the highlights. Um, 
Director Mark Brown of the MWPA indicated that the goals, values, and objectives were being discussed at the March meeting. And he also shared with the Ops Committee and others that the Finance Committee has already started their work on the fiscal year 21-22 budget framework. Um, in addition to that, the planning and program manager selection process wrapped up in March. And from what I understand, sometime this week or, or sometime next week, they may be hiring that individual to serve that important role and function as part of the executive team of the MWPA. I'm sure Director Brown is really um, excited to finally start forming some of the key components of his team so we can really get some work done. Um, one of the other things they're looking at is uh, lending the expertise of that individual to um, the other agencies throughout the county so that there's an opportunity to, to lean on that in individual for environmental and CEQA related expertise that can help each agency as it moves towards addressing some of its more critical projects. FireSafe Marin is now modifying the CHIPPER program to offer at least two opportunities for those residents and neighbors, or neighborhoods rather, that have been able to receive CHIPPER service in the past. And their goal is to increase participation beyond what they've done this past year. And I think they've done an excellent job of you know marketing and trying to get the word out to individuals but their their goal now is to try to do a, a really substantial increase in the amount of fuels that they're chipping and or dispersing so with that they've decided to divide um, Marin County into four different zones north south east and west and they have a three-phase program that really starts this year and moves into uh, next fire season as well and the first phase of the program is going to start May 17th and move until July 30th. The second Chief. phase is going to be from August 16th until October 29th. And then the third phase will be the start of service late next spring in early May through July of 2022. Um, their goal is to provide everyone service in both phase one and the second service will be provided in phase two. So for those that weren't able to get a hold of um, chipper opportunities in phase one, phase two will be their, their next best opportunity to do so. And that second phase, as I indicated, will start roughly 14 weeks after the first phase is completed. <coughs> Pardon me. Chief, this is um, Pascal. Yes. yes. Um, you mentioned that it's Fire Safe Marine doing this. Are they doing this uh, under a contract from the MWPA or from their own funds? No, no, they're doing it with the allocation of funding they get from the MWPA that includes public education, chipper program, signage, and other things that they're involved with um, as a um, extension of the effort. Got it, thank you. Roughly a budget of 1.2 million will be coming from the core allocation of funding um, that has been set aside specifically for their, um, their operation. Thank you, Chief. I'll just add that we are incredibly lucky to have uh, such an organization in Marin. They've been active for a long time. I've been following their recommendations for years from my yard and having them ready to go uh, as the funding comes in is amazing. I have to agree. Um, they're, they're really doing a lot of meaningful work and they're very organized and they're very committed to what they do and they, they do an excellent job at it. And so um, I, I think they're serving as the model for other agencies and other um, forums and organizations throughout the East Bay as an example. I, when I, before I even got to um, San Rafael last year, Sue Piper, who um, heads up one of the, um, how should I say, more, more visible operations in Oakland, um, spoke highly of Marin County, the Fire Safe Marin program, and others, and how they looked to them for best practices as they were trying to launch efforts within the city of Oakland. So we, we are very fortunate here. I, I agree. Um, Moving beyond that though, um, I also requested a air curtain burner presentation from CAL FIRE. I've, I've heard about the air curtain burners and their utility and their very efficient devices. Um, they have big portable, or should I say small mobile units and then big, um, really, how should I say, not really portable units that have to be come and set up and they're probably there for extended durations. The more portable ones can be placed on a trailer and driven in and out to different locations. And so, these, um, I'm more in favor of an air curtain burner where I was originally a little bit hesitant on it back a couple of years ago. I, I was starting to see more value in it because it's really a, a smokeless operation where they just take high amounts of heat and flame and just basically turn 
whatever is inside that burner into ash. And so with that, um, this is a, a very, I think, responsible way of disposing of fuels instead of redispersing those fuels back over some of the terrain that they've been chipped from or cut from. And so um, the challenge with the, the air curtain burners is that, you know, these are highly regulated devices and you're going to need the Bay Area Air Quality Management District's um, permits and approval for utilizing these. And so as far as I know right now, CAL FIRE is about the only agency using this equipment. They've actually um, offered to come and, and allow us to use some for some period of time in Marin County. But again, we're looking into trying to see what that, that would require uh, in the way of permits um, and the actual operation and the staff and personnel required to operate it for an extended period as an example. So hopefully more to come on this. I think most of the other individuals that saw the presentation saw value, but again, it comes with some, some stipulations and, and some parameters that may be less attractive at, at times for different agencies. So we'll see. Um, Chief, Chief, can I ask you a quick question? Uh, as you know, I was at the meeting when that was presented uh, to the MWPA. Yes. Um, in terms of like permitting or they, is it a different process than just say normal burn pile type activity in terms of permitting through air quality? You know, I don't have all the details on the permitting process. Um, Kate Anderson was working with Bear Air Quality Management staff trying to find out what exactly they were requiring in the way of permits and or process. And from what I understand, um, it may be a bit more advanced or different in that they want to um, put additional requirements on agencies that are operating with these because there is concern about smoke emission. Um, what I understand, though, that these devices are really almost smokeless devices, but there's still that, that concern, which makes me think maybe the, maybe the Bay Area Air Quality Management District just needs more familiarization with the different devices that are out there. So um, right. and I, I, know I don't have as much information as I can share at this point, but we're looking, and that's the next avenue that we want to speak to because, for instance, I've seen prescribed burns in Moraga or Renda here on this side of the bay, and... Yeah, I'm always curious as to how something like that is approved, but then when you're looking to do something that's containing smoke, you're saying that it's going to be more highly regulated than a prescribed burn, which may actually get out of control and create a bigger hazard for the community. So it's just a, right. a strange dynamic, but one that exists for some reason. Yeah, and I know Marin County Fire uh, certainly does a lot of burn pile days. They just had a couple last week or the week before, literally, you could see him right on the other side of Lucas Valley Road from uh, right across the street here. So I, I would assume Chief Weber would probably hopefully be a good resource there to look into what some of those requirements are too, because he must go through them already. Because I don't know of other municipal fire departments that are doing it, but I know county fire does it a lot. Yes, yes, no, absolutely. And, and I hope they reached out to you well in advance this time to confirmed that you know this was okay with anything that was planned with parks and recs or anything else no they were great their communication was great and this wasn't a training exercise these were just burn piles that they had done up there uh, so a little bit different than lighting the entire field across the freeway on fire <laughs> got, it, got it okay yeah i wasn't sure how big their piles were that's why i asked so no we got several calls about it because i mean you could literally as you drove down miller creek road you could see the smoke coming up from the hill just across the uh, main road here um but uh, we just, but they were good. In fact, Chief Senate was really good at uh, communicating to us that these were happening as well. No, that's great. No, these were much, much smaller in scale than the training exercise they do uh, every year or so at Silvera. Okay, Chief. Uh, that's helpful to know. Um, so I remember during the presentation, I believe the intent was to use Queenstone uh, as a as a, a way to separate um, the built up areas from um, the forested areas. And uh, is that is that correct, or am I making this up? The Queenstone uh, Fire Road. I believe Queenstone was one of the um, areas that we're, were spoken to in that meeting. Thank you. And so I believe there was some clearance done either one or two years ago, and at the time, and that which was fantastic, it made a huge difference. But at the time, instead of dispersing, they made piles, and the piles are still there, right by the road. And I'm wondering if that's. I guess I'm just flagging it. And you know, by now they're very old. I have no idea if there's still if there's any danger there, but just flagging that, however it was done before, resulted in, in pretty thick piles by by the road. 
Yeah, I, I would think a pile by itself probably poses less risk than distributing that that um, that fuel, if you will, across a wider area. But nonetheless, the pile, in my opinion, should be removed. I'm not in favor of leaving any debris. As I stated, I prefer the air curtain burner just, just because there's nothing remaining. Um, but that's my own personal preference. I don't know that the subject matter experts would agree with my thoughts on that. Um, that being said, I can certainly follow up with staff about what, what their intentions are with any of those piles that are still remaining that have been cut from years past to see whether or not we could go ahead and remove those. Uh, those They're probably, if nothing else, unsightly. So why not remove them for that reason alone, if nothing else? Thank you, Chief. Absolutely. So as I move further into the report, I'm going to jump into um, COVID-19 and um, speak to just briefly a couple of key things here. Chief, uh, retired Chief Chris Gray, as I indicated, has come back to assist the department, um, but he's also been a recent volunteer at the point of distribution at the Marin Civic Center and recently um, uh, went to speak with him and he told me that their goal that day was to administer roughly 1,800 vaccinations. And I just thought, wow, that's, that's huge. They're really moving forward with this in such a, you know, a, um, very intentful and, and intentional manner. And so, um, but this is occurring right now in the midst of another lull in vaccine availability. Um, unfortunately, for some reason, I think in Baltimore, maybe most of you are probably aware of this, but in Baltimore, Maryland, um, Johnson & Johnson ran into an issue with their vaccine, um, somehow or another being mixed with the wrong ingredients. And so roughly 15 million doses, from what I understand, may have been affected. Um, and so that's going to create an issue, as you can imagine, for a supply, a domino effect for supply in North America, whether it be Canada and or the U.S. And so with that, the goal and the, the push forward still continues. But I've also been hearing of concerns of a possible fourth surge from the, um, the Centers for Disease Control and their, their concern about how the public is kind of prematurely getting back to normal without everyone being vaccinated. And sometimes they're more often not not um, taking those precautions, washing their hands or wearing masks still. And so, um, and that fourth surge could involve some of the mutations of the virus as well. And so just as a reminder, everyone, we're, we're trying to make sure everyone understands the importance and value of continue to, to um, prepare for vaccination if you haven't already gotten them, but you know, maintain social distance, wash your hands, do all those things that are gonna keep you safe because there's still infections taking place. The numbers have just slowed, that's all. Um, also, one of the things that you know, doesn't really make sense to me, but is occurring is the closure of two of the, the larger super sites, if you will. Just as you're getting momentum and, and really getting uh, to a point where you're gonna be able to do massive vaccinations for individuals starting out, or excuse me, April 15th, from the age of 16 up, um, they're closing down a large site here in Oakland at the Coliseum uh, on April 11th, and then also one of the larger sites down in Southern California, I think in the Los Angeles area. So just I, I'm not really understanding the, the, the approach there, but it's something that's taking place for some reason from, from what I understand. I think the governor may have actually pushed to see if they can keep those sites open. Uh, I hope he's successful, or if they're going to close those sites, simultaneously stand up some others elsewhere. So. Um, if I can add a, a tiny data point here, Chief Pascal. Yes. Um, from what I've been told, it looks like the uh, the pharmacy chains in Marin and in particular Rite Aid have a very significant allocations and are 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 pretty easy to get a shot at if you qualify. So it, it could be that that the um, the supply has been diverted towards the pharmacies as opposed to fire departments and and counties. I see. Speculation well, somewhat. Yeah, I think uh, they were looking at federal staff and some state staff as well that were assisting from FEMA and Cal OES and others. And so if they're going to now rely heavily on the private sector, um, you know, I'm not sure what the motivation there is, but, you know, as long as the vaccinations are getting out, that's, that's the real key there. So whoever's going to be the, the, the source, I, I don't know if that's going to be as big an issue or not. It'd be interesting to see, though, whether or not they're actually able to meet the same numbers that these uh, super sites have been able to meet. Excuse me. Lastly, um, really good news. Over 100,000 Marin residents have received at least one dose of the vaccine as of about two weeks ago. So those numbers are climbing. And I heard something recently that said they expect maybe the entire adult population to possibly be vaccinated by the end of next month. 
So um, that's really great news that we're going to the summer with so many folks haven't received the vaccine. Um, I, I'm really, it's a, a good reason for optimism. I hope they keep the supply chain going strong so they can actually meet that target goal. So um, some of the schools are reopened to some degree for both in-person learning and or hybrid learning as, as has been the case for a while in some jurisdictions um, in some areas within the county. And I understand that roughly 9,000 educators have also been vaccinated already in Marin County. I didn't even know there were 9,000 educators. So, so I'm wondering if that includes uh, substitute teachers, principals, maybe uh, the cafeteria staff. I, I don't know, 9,000 just sounds like a massive number of teachers. So um, I just wonder what that term educators, you know, really what that meant. But it said educators and school staff, so I should probably include that as well. That might be custodial staff and, and security and others. So, but that's still a large number, so that's great. Um, uh, let's see, what else is important? Uh, let's go to emergency incidents and then Marin Wood stats. Uh, on March 10th, there was a little bit of rain. And as you can see, the outcome of that, if you look at the report, there was a rollover vehicle on Lucas Valley Road near Big Rock. But the great thing was, um, although the hail storm had just passed over that area, the vehicle you know, lost control and, and crashed, but there were no injuries. So um, very fortunate individual, um, but at the same time, you know, just, you know, the unexpected does occur, as you can imagine. You're driving one moment, next minute, you know, you're out, you know, spinning out of control and tumbling. So um, hopefully we won't have too many hail storms to create that kind of issue for us moving forward. And last but not least, our stats for the month of March. I'm happy to report that we've actually, you know, really dropped our turnout and total response times tremendously. We're down to five minutes and 20 seconds. It's lower than I've seen it, I think, in the entire year or so that I've been here now. So um, with that, uh, and you consider that the roads have been relatively dry, I think that may have a little something to do with, with response times as well. Um, so hats off to the engineers and the officers who know where they're going and know their districts well and are getting where they need to go in a, a very timely manner. So um, with that, you know, I'm going to encourage them to keep up the good work and that concludes my report. If there are any questions, I'm ready. Um, Thank you, Chief. Yeah, well, I got a question regarding. Um, so when they when they get a um, call for a rollover or something like that on the road, what what was a response time for that in particular? And you know what? I'd have to go back to that specific incident pull the incident number and then have staff generate the report of when the call came in, how much time it took them to get out into the apparatus and reporting in route or, um, or acknowledging the call and then on scene time. So, you know, Lucas Valley Road from station 58, I can't imagine it, it took a long time, but again, it depends on where exactly on Lucas Valley Road, I guess this incident occurred. And so, right. Yeah, um, I don't have the specifics on that, but I can. It says near Big Rock, so I, I don't know if that's something that everyone's familiar with. And yeah, kind of guesstimate is it two minutes away <laughs> as an example, or seven minutes away? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, but again, the engine has to drive carefully given those road conditions. Um, as you right. know, oils and everything else kind of release, um, you know, and it could create some issues where the the hydroplaning or something else could occur where, you know, the vehicle loses control if they're speeding too much and hit the brakes or, or don't apply their brakes intermittently and, and gradually. So, but my guess is whatever their response time was, it didn't greatly impact the, tur the average turnout and total response time. So I'm assuming they got there pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. That's but I'll follow up and find out. I can yeah, certainly. And that's good enough. That. Yeah. I just thought you had the information on hand, but that's fine. I don't, I don't need to know that particular specifics. I'm just curious. I see. All right. Uh, any other commissioners have any comments on the chief's report? Uh, this is Pascal. I think we're extre extremely lucky to have 50% of adults vaccinated or at least one shot already. I think we are incredibly lucky to have the Marine Wildfire Prevention Authority starting work and, and really just being around. Uh, and I thank you again, Chief White, for uh, pulling double duty with San Rafael and Marinwood. It's my pleasure. I appreciate being here. Thank you for allowing me to. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. 
yeah, it was all from all the commissioners. We appreciate the uh, the double duty. It's I think it's I think it's been well. I think it's been working really well. Uh, any public comment? One second. Go ahead, Steve. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I, I want to thank uh, Chief White for another uh, detailed, uh, informative report on the fire department. I do appreciate that. It it's, gives, gives a, the transparency uh, that I look for from our public officials, and I, I, uh, uh, I, I commend you for it. Um, and I particularly like the fact that you're looking uh, at air c curtain burners. I, I do think, uh, as I expressed earlier, my concern is we're going to have a lot of material to deal with, and we don't want to create additional problems. Um, I do wish that uh, uh, there would be some sort of statement uh, from the, the, the Fire Safe Marin uh, to uh, address some of the potential uh, erosion issues that might take place from their activities, but uh, other than that, I, I have nothing but praise for uh, Chief. Okay, thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, just as an addition, uh, if any of the public wants to kind of go through, there's a lot of reports that have been generated on from. Fire State Marin and FireWise, and I know they. I've gone to a few of their um, their uh, meetings, and they've actually been very informative. But it's it's I believe it's all there, and uh, the the websites. I know I know Eric has the websites because he's passed them on to me when I've whenever we've requested them. Um, so I just uh, want to say that uh, there's been a lot of information out there and, it, and it's, it's, it's good reading, you know, some of it's dry, but uh, it's good reading. All right. Uh, let's see, let's move um, to any commission number seven commissioners request for future, future agenda items. Do we have any future agenda items that we'd like to discuss? Tom or Pascal? Um, I have none. Would this okay. be a relevant forum to ask about the uh, the drought? More information about the drought. Okay, I think that would be a, a good item to discuss. Um, yeah, we can continue a uh, little more discussion as Chief get as Chief White gets more information. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about um, the refining of the plans to to uh, clear up the, the the vegetation so I think we can we can bring that up to the next meeting and get some more clarification and transcendency for the for the public um, I think anything else because if there's no other comments all right I'd like to thank all of you, uh, Director Kilhenny, Chief White, Eric, uh, Pascal, um, Tom, and our public, Steve. I'd like to thank you all for your comments. They're all very important, and uh, we appreciate we appreciate you guys all being here, helping out. Steve. And, uh, before you sign off, uh, you do yeah. have a, pub a public comment on a uh, future agenda request. Oh, okay. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't get Let that. Me. Okay, go ahead. One second. Yes. Uh, so, I think the uh, erosion issue is something that cannot be ignored. Um, I would like to uh, see Fire Safe Marin come back and. Uh, or I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm call, calling it a different, I, I forget what the name of the, the commission was that we, we uh, that presented last week. I'd like to see them come back and, and address some of the concerns that I've raised. Um, 
and also I'd like the the commissioners to uh, uh, discuss how you can be a little bit more transparent. You you can you can make these meetings. Uh, there's no reason why uh, these meetings can't be recorded. We have the capabilities in in house. I'd also like you guys to have your emails available so I can forward your information which uh, sometimes doesn't get to you so you can understand what those concerns are prior to the meeting. I don't want to waste your time. Um, I do hope that you take my comments as serious concerns uh, for our district. You are our representatives of the public and uh, and I, I, you know, if you don't, if you're not public, we, you're not really representing our concerns. So I know that the, the, you have the right uh, motivations. Uh, it's just that uh, the reason why people aren't participating is because they don't know about these meetings. The meetings are not made public and the reports are vague and not very informative. So, uh, you know, you're, I'm sure, and I'm sure everyone's beautiful. It's, I, it's not that, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you don't want to hide out from the public, but, uh, unfortunately the way it's set up, it's, it's not transparent at all. And, and it's just a really basic, uh, matter of government to be public. I know the County, uh, does record all their meetings and, and the proceedings are public. So, um, that's what I would like you to discuss at future meetings, how you can be more public. Okay, thank you, Steve. We'll, we'll work on transparency and we'll, we'll list that as a, pos, as, as a issue that we'll discuss next time, erosion. Uh, as far as us getting more, uh, I guess, contact with the public, I, um, I, I'll leave that to Eric to figure something out there. So I don't, I don't know what we can do as a commission specifically to do that, but we'll just, we'll have to see what happens in the future. All right. Anything else? All right. Then we shall adjourn this meeting. At 821. Chief? Thanks. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Thanks, right. everybody. Bye, Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. All righty. Thank Bye -bye. you, Steve. Good job. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.